uh, excited to be able to prepare for this game. Uh, we have a huge amount of respect for Gotham and they've got a lot of quality, probably one of the strongest teams uh, roster wise during the Olympic period with how, you know, it feels like a new season and you have to analyze and, and look at everyone again in a new way. Um, and I think our team had uh, achieved something important in the last game against Louisville away from home in an amazing atmosphere uh, by performing and getting a result. I think mentally it was important for us, it gives us confidence. So for us, we attack this game like every other. Uh, we're excited for this opportunity to be back at home, uh, full capacity, and and bring in all the energy that, that we always love to and, and, and aim to bring. All right, we will start it off with Nick Krupke. Mark, thanks, man. We've seen all inclinations of different size crowds from obviously none to I think it was 10% up to the 80. And now this is finally a chance to have a full house. What's the overall significance of that for you that we've made it from point A to point B and still some more steps to go, but at least we can get back and, and be back in a place where so many people love to be back together. Yeah, I, I think uh, you can you can look at this when we were the stadium, but also around the world. Obviously, uh, everything keeps changing, evolving right now. I think continues to look better and, and more things are opening up and everyone still has to, have, have uh, take their own, uh, be responsible, be safe and still follow follow steps that will all also continuous, continue us moving in the right direction. Uh, for the soul, for the heart, for the, for the mind, uh, I think is really important and it's really special. And for our team, for our players and staff, as the crowds have been slowly building, yeah, it's just, it's a 12th player, it's a 13th player. Um, with no doubt, we know it brings out the best in every other team when they get to come here as well. And the atmosphere is absolutely rocking. Um, but we, we thrive in that situation. And for us to be able to be with our family, the, the, whether it's every other uh, Portland Thorns fan or whether it's a Riveter, we're the part of the family. And to have more of our family in this stadium uh, is very important to us. Next, we'll go to Grant Little. Hey, Mark, hope you're doing well. You've already had two tight matches with Gotham. They've been really tough to break down, and the Thorns have struggled at times early in the season to break down compact defenses. How do you prepare a team for a challenge like this? Uh, I think uh, I agree with your the outcome um, of the two games, your assessment of the outcome. If I think about um, the process part, so how did we create chances? In our, in our game uh, in the Challenge Cup, we created a huge amount of chances. So we broke them down, but we couldn't finish. And I thought we had good success on the road of creating um, a number of chances. We left a lot out there again. Uh, but I respect their, their record of, of not conceding goals is good. Um, but I think we can take confidence from how we have broken them down and created chances. I think against this team, wherever the goalkeepers had a massive game because Didi did at home here and then Sheridan did away, or we haven't been clinical. I think that's been more the issue. So how do we address that? Well, absolutely not overthinking it and, and trying to make sure we continue to take care of details and build confidence and, and have players acting, playing um, free in, in these intense moments and not hopefully not thinking too much in the moment. Next is Tyler Tatchman. Hey, Coach, I hope you're doing well. Um, we're about to talk to Rocky um, in a little bit. Um, what was your first impression of her when she came to Portland, and, and how have you seen her grow since then? Yeah, uh, first of all, Rocky is a very, very high-level quality player. Both sides of the ball brings so much quality, brings a, a fighting spirit, brings an amazing professionalism and mentality. And her progress and her growth is only down to one thing, and it's her and her mindset and how she approaches every day. We tried to, we've been trying to get her here uh, ever since, um, yeah, uh, what, two, took, two, took us two or three years. I think when Henri left, it was a player that we felt uh, Rocky was someone that could uh, compete in our midfield. We've always had a very good midfield, but she was one of only two or three players in the league that were in the top, top tier. So excited to have her here. But I think since she's been here and the players and the environment, who, who she's been around has elevated her qualities. And she's been able to, due to herself, 
been able to really push on and progress. I see a more complete player, a player with, with improved awareness and, and scanning ability of reading the game. And I, I think we put her in a position that allows her to bring all her qualities because she's a little bit like Lindsay. Um, I think she's critical in build up at times and helps you break pressure because her, her awareness and receiving skills, her positioning is good. But she, she's great at assisting, passing, and you've seen her score special goals. So she's a true box to box player that can, if we sat her in the six, she's fine. If, she, if we sat her in the 10, she'd be fine. But sometimes when you do that with players like her, you, you, you feel that you could be limiting them. And um, I've been more than happy and impressed with her progress. And I'm so glad that we're able to get her here for our team, but mostly for her. because I think she's reaped the rewards. I think we're seeing a, a new level from her. And I still think we're just tickling the, sur the, the, the surface. I think we're going to continue to rise here. And you're going to see by the end of this year, a uh, a player that's capable of playing in, in any midfield in the world and being a dominant player. Caitlin Best. Hi, Mark. Um, I'd just like to ask about the, uh, obviously the adjustments that, that you've had to make to the roster with so many players out. Um, and we've kind of seen, you know, with anytime you take Sink and, and Haran out, like things are going to change, but um, you've, you've slotted uh, Marissa Everett and Celeste Bure right into that same shape. And um, I think that like defensively, they've done very well. They've been doing similar things. Um, do you feel like offensively that that changes the dynamic at all? And um, how, how do you think they have done stepping into those roles? I, I've, I would like to remove the, the kind of context of Sink and Linz. They're, they're very unique players. Um, and I don't think any individual or two or three would, would step in and, and be able to replace. However, as a team, I think our job is, is not to get one or two to replace what they do. It's, it's 10, 11 people all do a little more to replace the impact of what those two can do. And that's been our aim. And now talking about those two individuals without the context of those two, uh, I think you're seeing absolute flashes. You've seen nothing of what you're going to see of Marissa Everett. I think she is um, incredibly smart, aware, positional awareness, uh, opponent awareness, and how she adjusts her, her angles and positions to be able to be available. You saw flashes against Louisville when she receives. She's so fast at, at playing the next moment, the next pass, the next action. She's got fantastic uh, finishing ability. She's still building fitness. I wish she could play more. And I think we'll see a little bit more from her this week. Um, but she's still building fitness. It's, it's a challenge that we, we had a fantastic preseason of nine weeks where everyone was 90 minutes fit. But we also had a period of, of brutal travel and not able to train. Uh, I'm excited to see more. I think you can tell. Uh, and Celeste, what, what a privilege to have an experienced player. You know, back to 18, she was one of the stories of the seasons playing such a critical role in our midfield. I remember the semi-final against O.O. Uh, Rain um, playing against Ali Long and Jess Fishlock and Bure was, was so dominant and, and it capped off a magical year. Um, she, I think her strengths are, are more about her, her tackling, her intercepting, her ability to get pressure, her relentless energy. Um, this, this engine is just uh, built to, to never, never slow down, never stop. I could, after Louisville, I think she covered more ground than anyone else by a long way. And I bet she could have played another 100 minutes. She's, she's a warrior. She's a machine. So I'm really happy with how those guys slipped in. And then Yasmin Ryan and uh, Olivia Moultrie have, have also had opportunities. And I, I'm sure we'll see more of, of those guys um, getting more. Uh, but as we talk through the midfield, I could say this about the back line. I could say it's about the forwards. Obviously, you're saying it in goalkeeper as well. Um, I'm... I think you would always wish that you have every player every, for every game, uh, of course, it's, it's normal. But I also am looking forward to this period, as I've already said, because we have a lot of players with a lot of qualities that people haven't seen yet. And I can't wait to see um, them express themselves and them to be given this opportunity. Um, it's hard. Like Marissa Everett, um, she's got so much quality. You know, Chris, Christine Sinclair, Crystal Dunn, Rocky Rodriguez, Lindsay Horan. It's tough, but here's the opportunity. I think she's grabbing it. 
and she knows that we absolutely believe in her and we're excited for this period. All right, last question. We'll go back to Tyler Tatchman. Yeah, Coach, just uh, following up about Rocky, you mentioned just her working on her mindset. Um, what conversations do you have with her about, about the things that you're trying to improve and maybe specific ways that um, she can try to just keep improving the mindset? So to be clear, I think she has a very, she has always had a very strong mindset and a growth mindset where she's a great human being. She values the team. She values relationships and connections with everyone. But she's a very genuine person. She's a very real person. And that is the, the basis of uh, whatever experience she has. I think she grows and learns fast. There's no ego. There's no um, arrogance that slows down what could slow down other people from learning and growing. So it starts there. I think for us, I think we, I think we hold her to a really high standard. And, and I remember my first identity chat with her you know, a year and a half ago. Um, when she explained her identity to me and I was like, okay, right, we've got, there's 30 more things that you, that you have that are strengths. We, Cause she only mentioned a couple. She's very humble. I think what we have done is helped raise awareness that she is a very, very good top player with lots of quality and we hold her to a high standard to show them, but we also making sure she knows and believes how much um, quality she has and we just want to see it all the time and more of it every day. So I, I think the basis is her mindset, but where we play a role is making sure she, she's aware of all those, those qualities and humility is important, but also, um, yeah, you, you've got to be aware of your strengths and she's got a lot. Thank you, Coach.